I'm Stephen Bryant. I hold the Canada Excellence Research Chair in Materials Engineering here at the University of Calgary. I'm excited about this opportunity to be part of the Transdisciplinary Academy, and I'll explain why in the next few minutes. Fundamentally, we, we society, um, Canada, Alberta, Calgary, have got big challenges in climate and energy. And we need some big solutions to address those challenges. I say big, I think a better term would actually be collective. Some of the solutions may in fact be big, but they all need to be collective. They're gonna be effective. And that's where I think we can start to do things with a transdisciplinary approach, a transdisciplinary academy that is fundamentally different and I think will be much more impactful than how we've done things before, from, in my case, just from an engineering perspective. So let me walk you through how I've, how I've come to this conclusion. For 15 years at least, a lot of my research has been focused on one aspect of the climate energy challenge, and that is carbon sequestration. Simplest example, capture CO2 from a coal-fired power plant, pipe it over to some place where there's a convenient reservoir deep below the Earth's surface, and inject it into that reservoir. Okay, not complicated. Uh, there's a couple of great examples of this happening and has been happening for a few years here in Canada. Our research program was focused on anticipating what the challenges would be if we did this at much larger scale, at the scale needed to actually address uh, the climate challenge. So that, this was great. We had you know, a lot of smart students uh, addressing these issues, figuring out ways to work around that, how to understand it, how to mitigate, how to do this safely, effectively, efficiently at scale. And nothing was happening in the real world. That was incredibly frustrating. It was, it was depressing, frankly. And this isn't just you know, technical hubris. Engineers saying, look at our great solution. Let's go do it. It was deeper than that. Here is a, the phrase is a climate emergency. Here is part of a potential powerful solution. That's not the only thing, but it's an important thing that, and we can do it, but it's not getting done. Why not? I didn't understand it at the time I walked away from it. I, I, I confessed that I gave up on trying to push this any farther because things just weren't happening. Started working on other things, but here in the last couple of years, there's been an opportunity thanks to the breadth of research expertise in all things energy here at the university, a chance to rethink this and begin to understand a different approach. So, so 18 months ago, roughly, started having some conversations with, with other scientists and engineers who were working in the same space, you know, comparing notes, sharing frustrations. Expanded, started to expand that conversation to colleagues in law, in humanities. And what we started to realize from an engineering perspective was our approach had things backwards. We were doing what I just described, research, designing, figuring out technical solutions, technical workarounds to technical problems, and then asking for social license at the end of the process, which as we have seen and often you know, happens, either isn't granted doesn't register, things don't happen. What if instead of looking for social license after we do all this work, instead at the beginning of thinking about how to address a big challenge, we engaged the social perspective, we looked for social innovation to help steer the technological innovation. What if we were to, in, in short, try to design socially desirable technologies in this climate and energy space? What would that look like? How would we do that? And so this is a conversation that we, we started to have. It broadened. We had the opportunity to put together a, a proposal to, to insert on this. And that was probably my first real experience of getting down to the nitty gritty of trying to do something in this transdisciplinary fashion. And transdisciplinarity isn't just a synonym for multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary or cross-disciplinary. It really is fusing things to create a new kind of endeavor, uh, field of study, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but in this case, let's go with socially desirable technology development. So that process was very interesting for a lot of reasons. 
most fundamentally what was needed was the scientists and engineers and the humanities and law and business folks involved in this. We all needed to figure out how to speak each other's languages. This is not something we often do. But for the purposes of crafting a proposal, you've got to do this. It's not easy. It took a long time. It required handholding. It required trust. And it takes time to develop trust. But once you've done that, once you put in the effort to, to build those bridges and make those connections, you start to realize, okay, we collectively could do so much more than we were able to achieve uh, otherwise. And so that effort has paid off in several ways. We don't have time to talk about it here, uh, in addition to crafting that proposal. But for me, it's a tangible example of what we could start to do in a transdisciplinary academy where we've got a place, we've got a structure, and we have the opportunity to do have much more impact collectively. In our case, designing technical solutions uh, from the engineering perspective where they're appropriate with people's values being accounted for, not just the cost of things, but what values do people associate with what kinds of outcomes, with what kinds of activities. It's a different conversation than we have classically had as we train our engineering students. And conversely, we can also communicate with humanities and law and business. Here's the technical feasibility issues. Here's what's, but here's the alternatives. Here's ways to think about collectively coming up with a solution that works best in the short time available to address these climate and energy challenges for the greatest good that we can achieve. I'm really looking forward to getting to do much more of this as we move forward uh, in Growth Through Focus and in this Transdisciplinary Academy in particular. Thanks very much.